G'day guys, Tom and Wade here from DDHQ. We're a very special producer we're doing a bit of a deep dive on today. Um, Wade, what are, we, what are we up to? Pumped, mate. We're looking at Helm uh, 2023 Rieslings. This is our first full set of 2023 wines. It is. So it we've is. had the odd like Sav Long yeah. or Pet Nan or something come in, but for a full set of premium releases uh, from one of the premier Riesling producers in the country, this is going to be a belter. And not only the premier Riesling producers, but one of the premier moustache producers in Australian wine. 100%. Ken, Ken the Helm. The Murrumbateman moustache. <laughs> but he's more than just a moustache, isn't he? This is actually, it's 50 years in 2023 since um, Ken Helm um, opened their, their winery and cellar door um, there in Murrumbateman in Canberra, um, which is an amazing feat. He's just an absolute legend of Australian wine. Ken is... Uh, been making Riesling for, for nearly all 50 years there. He's won a stack of awards uh, and lots of acknowledgements. He's set up wine shows. He's set up the International Riesling Challenge um, and, and considered one of the finest producers of Riesling in, in Australia uh, in a range of styles and, and a great bloke uh, and a great um, winemaking family. So these days, um, daughter Stephanie... Um, well, not even these days. I reckon she's been making wine there since she was in nappies, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> she'd grown up with Riesling on the on the dummy. 100%. Um, and, and she helps Ken make the wines these days. Uh, and, and Stephanie's husband, Ben, sort of uh, runs the, the vineyard and, and winery as well. So um, it, it's a family affair. And, and these wines uh, are, are very, like, traditionally made. They haven't changed much over the years, but meticulous farming and winemaking uh, and, and has introduced some different styles over the years as well. Uh, and we're going to look at all of them today in, in one line, which is great because they've actually had a, a bit of a rotten run in recent years. Oh, with yeah. Weather and, and everything as well. A couple of terrible vintages back to back. Like last year, I think almost everything Riesling in, in Helmland got wiped out from... There was like a mixture of frost and some hail, and yeah. it was just brutal. So it's good to have these back. Look, this is the first time we've seen the full lineup in probably three years, I reckon. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks to the Helms for the opportunity. So, um, first off, we're looking at um, the one of the more recent additions, although I haven't said recent, 16 years or something. 16, 16, 16 vintage. 16 years. That's the, the half dry, uh, the half trocken, bulb trocken. Um, and important to, to, I guess, mention with the Helms is, is their German heritage. So, um, they come from an old German uh, grape growing family, I understand. Um, having said that, um, I think fifth, fifth generation in Australia. Um, involved in, in the wine industry as well. Um, and, and this, I guess, is an ode to those sort of uh, medium dry German styles. So you've kind of got to start here uh, if you're going to look through this lineup. For one thing, because the Helm Rieslings are notorious for having insane acidity, uh, particularly when they're young. It's about as young as you get. Uh, I think these were bottled like three weeks ago. So we let them sort of chill out for a couple of weeks before we actually yeah. ripped them open. But you start with the half dry to sort of easy into it because it's going to get intense once we get up to the premium. Um, so this is a, a absolutely beautiful wine, right? Like right on release, insanely floral. So floral, just but, jumps out of the glass, doesn't it? But for like a half dry example, I don't know what, do you know what the residual is on this? I don't. It's I don't a, think Ken knows. No, no, no. It's just like, it's a bit sweeter, basically. It's a bit sweeter. What's the alcohol? So it's 11%. 11 so look, I don't think it's going to, it's particularly sweet. Yeah, um, and it's a hazard, I guess, maybe around 15, 20 grams or, or something long, something like that. Feels about that, but the, the acid just eats that sugar, and it's got such a lovely balance of freshness. It's not yeah. like a sweet Riesling as no. like your, your grandma used to drink, right? All, all, of like, that, all that sweetness does, and sugar just actually softens the acid, as you said, and, and makes it approachable to drink now. <laughs> Whereas some of these, I'm sure they'll be good, but you can make an argument where you should lay them down and and let it develop, whereas that's that's right to go in a tumbler by, by the pool right now, mate. Beautiful wine, beautiful. And like, for a sweeter style of Riesling, it's got so much moorishness to it. Like I want to just go back, like I want to just stick a straw in that and guzzle it. <laughs> so um, one of the more recent, um, maybe it was this one that was 16 inches. No, sorry, since 2012. So what's that, make this the 11th or 12th sort of vintage of this wine. Um, this is the Tumbarumba Riesling. Um, Tumbarumba, further south, um, on the edge of the snowies there in New South Wales. And, and I believe in 2012, they, they got access to a parcel of fruit there from the, um, the Excelsior Vineyard. Uh, and loved it so much that, that Ken wanted to continue making this wine. Um, and it's very cool down in Tumba. So uh, you tend to see a, a, a very light, zippy style of, of yeah. Riesling. 
Yeah, so the first thing that I, I see in that, like, welcome to dry Ken Helm Rieslings, like acid straight away, it's like, poof. Uh, but the, this is always um, sort of aromatically way different to the Murray Bateman offering. So, aniseed? Do you get like a Definitely. lavender yeah. kind of aniseedy sort of top note to it? Yeah, good call. Um, really, yeah. really interesting. Much, much better palette than me, mate. I was like, oh, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Hints of aniseed. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but um, the, and the acidity profile is dramatically different to the Canberra Rieslings as well. It's I don't know. I'm going to say the word brittle. Like it's kind of yeah. like it's it's daintier or something. It's a little bit crisper. It's a little bit like yeah. sort of I don't know. Brittle is the word that comes to mind. No, you're right. Beautiful. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's more delicately framed. Um, very light. Very zippy. Um, also, could be drunk out of a tumbler by the pool. Like all. In a schooner glass. In a schooner glass. Yep. Interesting. I can't wait to contrast this to this to this because um, Ken's uh, Canberra Riesling's power is is uh, oh, what you come to expect. That's cool. That's the best vintage of that I've got. Yeah. So twenty twenty three worth chatting a little bit about vintage conditions. So it's one of the coolest vintages on record for Ken. Like I think I think he said the fourth coolest vintage they've had. So um, in spring and winter of of twenty twenty two leading to vintage. Uh, pretty shocking weather, if you can remember, if you're in Sydney, um, it was pretty pretty grim. So sort of winter and spring yeah. weather, um, lots of rain um, and 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 very cold. Um, a, a better summer, which is important. I know a lot of these guys were, were hanging out to make sure that the heat came and it was dry over early summer to to uh, enable ripening. But um, definitely on the cooler side. But but they're really stoked with the vintage and, and excited about yeah, yeah. It, it should be like one of those sort of benchmark Riesling vintages in this part of the world um, and speaking of sort of benchmark styles if you want to give someone a, an idea of what classic Murrum Bateman or Canberra di District Riesling is this is the bottle of wine you do it with uh, just the classic Ken Helm Riesling um, this is sort of, I don't know what, it, in its 40 something vintage or something like that. So 47th vintage at this wine. Years. So they planted the vines for this on the on the Helm estate there uh, in 1974. And I guess what first yielded in probably 77, if my maths is correct, mm -hmm. um, making this the, the 47th. Wow. Um, which is, I mean, what an effort. And interestingly, I didn't see this. Riesling trivia on the back of every bottle. How good is that? <laughs> Yeah, bring it so, on. when were the first Riesling vines planted in Australia? Oh, jeez. It'd have to be like Busby Collection, wouldn't it? So, I'm going to say Bess. I'm going to say 1857. Yeah, cool. No, but oh. I mean, <laughs> you're on the right cool. track. <laughs> so, it could have been Arthur Phillip on the First Fleet, 1788. James Busby, 1831. Johann Stein, 1837. Etc, etc. What is certain is that Riesling was one of the first vines in Australia and for nearly 200 years has added to the premium wine image of Australia. There you go. Cool story, Tom. Cool story. A bit of trivia with your, with your Riesling. <laughs> um, right. So this is very lean, very intense, very focused and, and a really a baby at this stage. Um, even the classic, which you know, technically is a little bit more approachable than the, than the premium example, this is really a cellaring style of Riesling that I'd be drinking this and this while I'm waiting for this and this to develop. Yeah, the palate's coiled, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's still some, some florals here in the nose. I think it's not long in bottle. You're seeing a little bit of those early fruitier you know, estuary kind of characters there uh, on, on the nose. Same with all of them. Uh, on the palate, though, it's mineral tension. And, and, yeah. Like flinty, rocky, like crushed rock, like dry, tense just driving yeah. that's yeah. a it's a big acid but it's not like pokey awkward acid no that 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 is you know some some like young Clare valley in valley rieslings uh, especially more commercial styles the acidity is so brisk it actually almost hurts the teeth to yeah. to drink them that's not like that it's like this wall of acid and fruit but it's yeah. just it's all sort of like not quite showing itself, but it's all there. Yeah, it's a it's a bloody good bottle of wine, far out. Um, I I love that style of riesling too. Like this is kind of a little bit more delicate and subtle than sort of your classic freight train, you know, really premium South Australian rieslings. Um, just a gorgeous example of Australian riesling, like right little, at the top. A little bit almost talky as well. Yeah, a little bit the of chalkiness. Yeah, chalky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good call. Yeah. Wow, very cool. All right, and then the big boy, 
the premium, which yeah. is just sort of a single block, I believe, sort of um, release each year or in good years. Yeah, so he skips years. Like, yeah. I think maybe, what, I can remember four or five in the last 10 years. So maybe every other year, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, basically, this is classic ramped up to turn everything up to 11, yeah. pretty much. So, <laughs> I remember the first vintage of this I tried, I think I had like four teeth fall out. <laughs> the enamel was just like stripped straight off of, like it was insane. But uh, yeah, this is this is what, you know, cellaring Australian Riesling is supposed to look like when it's young. It's just a ball of wound up lightning intensity. Mmm. Smells great. Far out. Power. Limey, kind yeah. of grapefruity as well. It's like, just it's just this but more. Yeah, yeah. 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 But there's a bit more, a bit more early fruit. Yeah. Oh, just the acid just comes at you in, in waves, doesn't it? Yeah, you're still gonna be tasting that tomorrow. The finish yeah. on that is insane. Um yeah, that's a they've been making these wines for fifty years. I reckon these would live just about fifty years, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Oh, I'd love to see that in 50 years, far out. Yeah, Ken, that, that's, a, that's a hint, mate. Send some uh, some other bottles <laughs> to DDHQ. Yes, thank you, Ken. Maybe we need to go down there. Mm. Mate, far out. Poor. It's just blistering, isn't it? Yeah, it just yeah. rips your face off. Yeah, it's a fireworks Riesling. That's, um, that's good. They look way more, like, together. Than what I was expecting at the moment. Like they're yeah. beautiful purity. You can see character. You can see fruit. You can see everything already. It's a really good vintage. Yeah, those yeah. wines. Like they. Yeah. But serious. Like this isn't drink by the pool. Do not drink by the pool. Yeah. <laughs> these are maybe drink drink by your grandchildren's pool. Yeah. Um. Because the, these these two uh, are for this is for you know mid term cellaring mid to long term. This is. This is something to give your great great grandchildren. Honestly, um, someone's got to drink them. Well, you drink these while you're awake. Yeah, you yeah. Know? If only we could put them together in like a little pack or something. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Um, anyway, what what a lineup of wines! Yeah, what a yeah. producer! Amazing. One of Australia's best. One of Australia's most unique Riesling producers too. One hundred percent. Total individual style of wines, um, and and Ken and, and Stephanie doing a, a marvelous job there in Murray and Bateman. Um, and uh, yeah, we just we just love these wines every year, guys. So check them out. Um, they they come and go pretty quickly. Um, so we'll have these online and and yeah, pop in and, and see the helms at their uh, gorgeous cellar door in Canberra as well if you get the chance. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. Cheers.